So the first thing that I'm going to do is just pull it out of the media. I'm going to, um, ah, oh, oh my God, oh my God. First and foremost, the reason that I am converting it is because now it only has two leaves, one that is growing. It has um, obtained all of the nutrients from this leaf, so it is very, very fragile. Anytime a Phalaenopsis orchid goes from being a big orchid all the way down to a mini, which is just some setback leaves, it didn't have the nutrients that it needed to produce a leaf as big as the previous one. So I am going to convert it into water culture. I do want to let you guys know that you should use gloves. I'm not using gloves because I'm hard headed, but I will leave a video, honey. I will make a video explaining the importance of using gloves through this process. So I'm just squeezing the pie. I don't know what's gonna come out of here. I'm real scared. All I know is that new root. Okay. Okay. Ugh. So, fail pals, as you can see, we have some white mold growing down here, which means that the bottom of the pot down here was compacted, um, meaning that the moss is just sitting down real heavy and the water is sitting at the bottom of it. That's what I was telling you guys about in a previous video. So, the roots suffocated and died. So, what I'm going to do is... You have to stay tuned. Okay, foul pals. So the only thing that I have going is this little bitty root that's growing right here and this leaf that's growing inside of here. Um, this orchid is hanging on by a strand, but guys, I will keep you guys updated. I'm very good at that. So the first thing I'm going to do is spray it down with some hydrogen peroxide, okay? And that is going to kill all of the white mold and even black mold. And it's also going to be very friendly to your orchid new roots, okay? Can you hear it fizzing? So I'm going to do that a couple of times. I'm going to um, let it fizz. I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to spray it again. Now, foul pals, I have a fan blowing to help with drying off the phalaenopsis while it's soaking in that peroxide. Um, when it comes to choosing the container for your Phalaenopsis orchid, you want to keep in mind that it's very economical that the smaller, um, the more small the container is, the less water that you would have to put in there. Remember that you are going to use distilled water or pure water, which is, <laughs> honey, it takes time and money. So to be more economical, the smaller the container, the less water that you have to put in there because remember, you're putting um, fresh water in here every day. Okay, foul pals? So this glass right here, I would have to put a lot more water just for that little or orchid to sit on top like that. So it's the same for this. I could cut it down small, but I don't believe the leaves will be able to anchor it on top of this plastic bottle. So this little shot glass right here, honey, from Mexico, <laughs> um, <laughs> it would be adequate in here, I suppose. But all right, foul pals, stay tuned. Get to slicing and dicing on the little roots that this Phalaenopsis have. The first thing that I want to do is just make sure that I clean or sterilize my scissors by using some alcohol, putting it on a paper towel, and just wiping those blades off. Okay, foul pals, just like that. And you're doing and you're doing that to make sure that you are not affecting your Phalaenopsis orchid with any type of bacteria on your blades that you are not able to see. So the roots that I am going to cut are the ones that has the most mold on them, which is just going to be the tip of them because I need some roots to maintain this Phalaenopsis. If you can look right here, and you want to make sure before you get to snipping and tucking, it's a root right here that's trying to grow. So I'm not going to cut that. I'm going to cut this one. And the reason I'm going to cut it is because it's very soggy and mushy. 
This is very hard and firm. This right here is soggy and mushy. That's why you need shears. This is soggy and mushy as well. <laughs> this side getting mushy as well, but it didn't have that much mold on it. So I'm going to leave it So these are the roots that I'm going to leave it with Hopefully when I do my update video on my water culture phalaenopsis that um, I would have a lot more good news for you guys. So The next thing that I'm going to do is make sure that it will be able to fit in this container and Honey, let me think about it. Let me think about it. This might be too small. I mean, it is in there, and I could put the base of it right here, but this root, I'm afraid, will be too large when it comes out, and it might prohibit it from growing. So we're going to have to choose a different container. Stay tuned. So, Foul Pals, let's try using this glass. See how it would go in this glass. And I promise I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm using these glasses because, honey, purely they're for here for decoration, honey. Um, let me try something else. Let me try something else because that's still a lot of water I would have to put in there in order for it to get the water that I need for it to get. So let me try something else. I have my plastic um, bottle that I am going to try to use. And guys, if you didn't know, I have a um, foul pal named Fifi. F-I-F-I. -F -I. She has a channel, and I saw she had a great video on um, making um, containers for your Phalaenopsis orchid. Fail Pals, this is not cute, but it's perfect. Because um, look at the amount of water that I will put in there. All of the roots. I mean, it's perfect. It's perfect. But yes, check out my... Um, that's the only thing I'm going to be concerned about. Let me try something else. Stage to do was I cut up another plastic bottle and I am going to use River Rocks to um, see if it will anchor the orchid in the pot, meaning that it will stabilize it. I also have a foul pal named um, Jesus, but I call him Jesus because it's something about the name Jesus. Hey, it is the sweetest name. I know, hey, hey, yes, but his channel is called um, Orchids um, Garden and More, and he is only 14 years old, honey. You know, the people's channel, I'm going for the youth, honey. Yes, a 14-year-old kid that's already interested in growing and helping Mother Nature. That's a beautiful thing. And the fact that he has started his own channel lets you know that he will be a great entrepreneur. Also, I want to um, shout out my foul pals, my new foul pals, Charles and Diane. And the reason I'm saying, hey, Diane and Charles, is because you guys um, are a new subscriber and upon being a new subscriber, you sat and watched video after video after video and commented on it each and every video. And so you gave me a new foul pal to talk to. That's what I like, honey. Get in them comment boxes because I respond. But foul pals, I think that this is going to be my setup for water culture for this orchid. Of course, you would not put river rocks in all of them, but this is the only container that I had that is going to be adequate. And this is so small, I could put it in my hand each and every day, pour it out, and then put more water in it and keep it moving. Okay? So, I'm going to let you see how much water I put inside of it, and then we are done, foul pals. We done, baby.
the roots that's already in there, they're already in bad shape. I'm not concerned about them. What you want is the axis of the orchid, which is the very bottom of it, touching the stem right there. That's what you want. And that root right there, any roots to come, is going to promote new root growth. Now, while it is in here, living off of pure water, I am going to foliar feed. Okay? Now, I'm going to foliar feed with some potassium. Most people call it seaweed extract. Now, if you want to know how I concoct it, I will leave, a, <laughs> I will leave an info card above, honey, okay? So when it comes to spraying your Phalaenopsis orchid, you want to get a fine mist sprayer, okay? So what, look, just like that. So you don't have to worry about a lot of water accumulating sitting in the crown of your sick, dehydrated, rootless Phalaenopsis, okay? And you're going to do that at nighttime. At nighttime is the best time to mist your Phalaenopsis orchid. Also, Make sure that you have a good ceiling fan or box fan going to promote good air circulation through this process. Now, tomorrow, or yes, tomorrow, I'm going to pour the water out and let it dry for a day. Then repeat the process. Well, there you have it, foul pals. Welcome to Water Culture from Orchids for Dummies. Until next time.